Hello student. Last day we have discussed the phylum Eschelmintis or the Nematoda. Today we are going to start with a species that is a parasite. The name is Ascaris. Ascaris is just uh, we can write Ascaris scientific name Lumbricoidris. So in case of Ascaris, what type of organism is that? This organism is a sexually dimorphic animal sexually dimorphic animal means this organism have completely separate male and female organism now what are the differences between male and the female that in case of female they're uh, long and have a straight end part or the caudal part what is happening in case of the males the males are shorter as compared to the females and they have a curved tail in case of the female, they have separate gonophore and the anus and in case of male, they have a common aperture through which it releases the gametes also urine as well as the fecal matter that is known as kulaka. Now, uh, in the Ascaris, the differences we have seen already in the last video and along with that, in case of the phylum Ascalmentis, what type of layers, skin uh, layers, the body layers we have seen, we have already discussed those. The outermost layer is the uh, thick cuticle cortex layer. The cortex is going to have a very specific type of protein keratin which is specialized so that they are not get digested in the host enzyme. Just behind that, they are going to have the matrix where the protein uh, collagen is there. Then after that, they have the basement membrane and just behind the, beneath the basement membrane, they have the syncytial epithelium. And just after that, beneath the syncytial epithelium, they have the longitudinal uh, muscles. One thing you have to know, what is the meaning of syncytial? Syncytial means the cells which have more than one nucleus or we can call also syncytial means multinucleate. Now just see what is the main characteristics as we are discussing from the parasitic point of view. So we have to know about the Ascaris character that means what is the habitat. See this organism Ascaris this is a diagenic parasite uh, sorry this is a monogenic parasite. It is different from the, uh, the another two organisms in the phylum platyhelminths we have discussed. One was the liver fluke and another was the tapeworm. What happened to those animals? They have the two hosts where they complete a life cycle. But what happened in case of Ascaris? It is a monogenic parasite. So what about the monogenic parasite that it complete the whole life cycle in only one host body? And what is that host? Unfortunately, us, that is human, it caused the disease that is ascariasis. So that ascaris infection generally, um, it is seen in children rather than the adults. So with the contaminated food or the water, if that water have suppose uh, that ascaris larva, then it enter inside the digestive uh, canal. Then in the digestive canal, it start the life cycle. And within the, the elementary canal itself, they complete the whole life cycle. So let's just start with the uh, life cycle. Before that, we have to also know the uh, whole uh, elementary canal. Along with that, the heart and the lung we have to draw. Then only we can able to understand. See, first of all, here this is the nose, mouth. Then here this is the buccal cavity and above that this is the nasal chamber. This region is the pharynx region. Uh, this is the common pathway. Then after that here we have the food pipe. So this one is the food pipe. Okay. This is the stomach. Then after that this one this is the duodenum. And this duodenum that will proceed it gets coiled elongated and what is that known as this is known as the jejunum and the ileum so this ileum region they will extend and after that it form the large intestine 
So large intestine will come to an end that is colon and then the anus. In this region we have an organ that is in the vermiform state. What is that known? That is known as the vermiform appendix which is not functional in case of human but yes it is actually specialized to digest the cellulose that is uh, basically functional in case of the uh, ruminating animals like cow. In case of us also it is present but do not have that much specialized function but it is present. Now just here we have a portal system and this is the liver. Okay so this is the liver. Here it is going to have two parts. Okay and here we have a system just this is the hepatic portal system. This is the liver. Here in this region we have the uh, okay, so the next, this is the digestive system. We have drawn with the color blue. Then after that, this is the heart. On either side, what we have? The lungs. Then this one is the diaphragm. And here, this is the windpipe. So this windpipe, that will be supposed up to this. Not like that exactly. It is present on the cell. Okay, so this is about the two system, digestive and the respiratory system. In just for in to understand, I have drawn this. Actually, it's not at all a good diagram. Let's just start it. First of all, what happened? See, this is the water, and in the water, the first encysted larva is present, which is within a very thick cuticle it is actually a egg and that egg is mammillated egg what is the meaning of mammillated egg that is covered by three protective covering protein and a lipid layer so that egg that will transform into a first inf uh, non-infectious larva see within the egg itself it is still going to have its membrane three membranes around but here, this embryo will transform into a larval stage that is the first instar larva. So this first instar larva, this is the non-infectious larva. Remember, it cannot cause disease. Now, this non-infectious larva that will still have its cis layer. It is also surrounded by its membrane. Now, after that, let us see that this uh, non-infectious first since the larva that within the shell, within that protective covering, it transform into the next larval stage. What is that? That is the second larva. Now, just see, this is the second larva, which is the infectious larva now. So, that second larva, which is going to have its protective covering, okay so this second infectious larva is present in the water okay and along with the water it enters it enters in the human body with the contaminated food or water so if that second insta larva if it is present in the water and that water is taken by the uh, baby or the children or the adult also it can be uh, if it is taken, then what happens inside the digestive system, this second insta larva can enter. But still, there is a encysted covering, the protective layer is still present. So it enters. So whenever it enters, first of all, what it is going to do? With water, it will enter into the digestive canal, into the alimentary canal. In the alimentary canal, first of all, it will go into the stomach and from the stomach, it will go pass through this duodenum and reach in the region of the uh, jejunum and the ilium. That is the part of small intestine. So in the small intestine, what happened? It comes out of the shell. That means it sheds the shell. The insisted capsule was shed by that second insta larva and the second insta larva will come out. So that second insta larva is still there but this second insta larva will come out of the shell. Now it start to feed on the tissues of the intestine of human. Now at one period of time what happened it will start to bore the intestinal wall and eventually it reaches the hepatic portal system. So this is the hepatic portal system 
from this hepatic portal system it will reach the liver so that same second insta larva will enter into the liver it takes the liver tissues and after that boring this uh, liver tissue and eventually it will reach the heart that means now here in the heart we have four chamber heart you know already the heart have four chambers right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle so first of all suppose this is the heart so for your clear understanding i will show that this two chambers this is right auricle this is right ventricle this is left auricle this is left ventricle now uh, this right side actually this is deoxygenated and the left part is oxygenated now this deoxygenated blood will enter into the right atrium from the right atrium blood will go to the right ventricle from the right ventricle the pulmonary aorta will take the deoxygenated blood to the lungs in the lungs it will get oxygenated then after that oxygenated blood will come into the left atrium via the pulmonary vein and from the pulmonary vein that blood will reach reach the left auricle from the left auricle it will enter into the left ventricle from the left ventricle it will go to the different parts of the body through the systemic aorta all these things are not needed we require only the right side so first of all what happened the second insta larva this is suppose the second insta larva it comes through this blood vessel that is the uh, veins inferior vena cava from the inferior vena cava it enter into the right atrium from the right atrium the blood will go pump to the right ventricle so along with that the second insta larva will also enter into the right ventricle from the right ventricle the blood with the second insta larva will be pumped by uh, this uh, blood vessel that is pulmonary artery this is the pulmonary artery and from the pulmonary artery the the blood will go to the lungs that means now from the heart the second insta larva will go to the lungs okay so this way it will go to the lungs so this is the same second insta larva only so that second insta larva will go to the lungs in the lungs what it is going to do it transformed into the uh, la next larval stage that is the third insta larva so here this is a second so second will transform to the third insta larva inside the air bags of the lungs their air bags are known as the alveoli so inside the alveoli the third insta larva will metamorphose to the next larval stage that will be fourth insta larva so ultimately it transform into the last larval stage that is the fourth insta larva now from the fourth insta larva what will happen next what happened that fourth insta larva will come outside the lungs it will reach the trachea and from the trachea it will reach the region of the uh, larynx and then the pharynx but what happened sometime it is possible that from this pharynx it can come out so this way it can come out and if it comes out then uh, it's so okay. it's good for the individual that it comes out but very often it do not happen why do not happen because every time we swallow so if you swallow then what will happen that fourth insta larva once again will go to the elementary canal to the esophagus once again so from the esophagus it will go to the stomach from the stomach it will go to the duodenum from the duodenum it will reach the site of once again the same region jejunum and the ileum of the small intestine now what will happen whenever the fourth insta larva from all this passage that will reach ultimately to the last part that is the elementary canal jejunum and the ileum now it will convert into the adult so whenever it converts into adult what will happen this organism see this is supposed the male this is the female so male and the female will undergo sexual reproduction after sexual reproduction it produces the gamete inside the female body now after some time that will start cleavage it form the uh, embryo that embryo will be covered by a cysted wall so that type of egg is known as mammillated egg because that egg that consists of three protective covering two protein and one lipid layer 
so what happened that uh, uh, that same embryo which is now covered by this three membranes that will come out of this body see with this intestine that um, that La, the two male and the female will undergo reproduction and produce the eggs. Eggs will come out, pass through this ascending colon, then the transverse colon, then the descending colon, sigmoid colon, and then rectum. And from the rectum, the egg will come out with the fecal matter. Now just see that fecal matter. Suppose that individual excrete near the water bodies. Earlier what uh, happened in the villages basically, the people used to excrete, remove their excreta near the water bodies and after that they take the water, take a shower from the same water body. That was actually earlier the lifestyle. But nowadays the infection of our escaris is very much low. Why? Because we use separate uh, toilet, separate bathroom. But earlier this had not happened. Why? Because the people used to urinate uh, and excrete in near the same water body and same water is taken for the household uses too. Like for consuming the water, drinking the water, for uh, washing food or for making preparation of the vegetable, cutting the vegetable, all of these processes they use the same water. So what happens if that individual remove the fecal matter near the water body, that water body come in contact with the fecal matter, then it will going to have this egg. So that fecal matter that contains the egg, if it, come, 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 if it comes in contact with the water and the same water, that same water if it is taken by the people for the household uses, then what happens See, if that same water is taken, the egg converts to first is the lava, first to the second and the second it will enter inside the mouth once again complete the life cycle so this way they complete the life cycle so this that that is about the life cycle of escaris so that escaris cause a condition and this is basically in case of children that is escariasis so this escariasis is caused by that organism the escaris lumbricoidris this is sexually dimorphic organism which is now entering first of all through the mouth go to the stomach then the duodenum then reach the small intestine one part of the small intestine jejunum and the ileum then from the jejunum and the ileum it comes to the hepatic portal system then the liver from the inferior vena cava to the right atrium to the right ventricle pulmonary artery lungs from the lungs it will go to the trachea go to the region of pharynx swallowed by the men once again it will enter inside the esophagus stomach intestine become adult after that they will release the egg that egg consists the embryo which now comes out throughout this colon and after that that excreta containing that egg now contaminate the water and that water if it is taken by the people then the people will also suffer from the same condition that is escaris escariasis sorry so this way the whole life cycle of escaris completes in this way this is a morogenic parasite only it is human where it complete the whole life cycle so this is all about the life cycle of escaris we have completed escariasis uh, we have uh, completed the life cycle of escaris as well as the whole escalmentis or nematoda some organisms the parasitic organism we have seen like Ucheraria bancrofti, uh, that organism cause the uh, condition, the disease actually this is known as filariasis or the elephantiasis. This way some of the parasites are here. Those parasites they cause the different type of disease in human as well as same and other organisms too. I have given in the PDF. So you just take it, take the note. I have not drawn the diagram. You just take a screenshot and draw the diagram. That is all about the whole phylum escalmentis. Hope you have understood. Thank you.